and welcome to Catalan News. A united front, but on separate tickets. It's only three days until the deadline to register electoral lists for the December 21st elections, and both pro-independence and unionist parties will run on their own. But the three parties on each side are considering sharing part of their manifestos. Discussions are on in Catalonia, but also in Brussels, where President Puigdemont is in exile. He will lead the Together for Catalonia list, and met today in the European capital with the Secretary General of the other big pro-independence party, Esquerra Republicana. They both ran together in the last election, but this time, they won't. Here at Catalan News, we'll tell you why, and we'll also find out more about the cities of the future by visiting Barcelona's Smart City Fair, taking place this week. Let's start. Pro-independence parties are running separately in the election, but they are coordinating a new common roadmap to follow after the December 21st election, if they manage to keep their majority in the chamber. As are the Unionists, with both the People's Party and Ciudadans happy to work together to avoid a new pro-independence majority in Parliament. And who will achieve it? That is up to voters, who will have a new important appointment at the ballot boxes on December 21st. The pro-independence parties will most likely stand separately in the election, yet they might share part of their manifestos in order to offer a joint plan of what's next for the independence campaign. President Puigdemont at the head of the Together for Catalonia list and Marta Rovira, Secretary General of Esquerra Republicana, met today in Brussels in an attempt to agree on a joint roadmap regardless of who wins the election. Evidentment que hi ha un acord per fer un front comú i farem el front comú a nivell polític perquè la estratègia política la compartim i és absolutament coordinada i llavors el que estem estudiant és quina és la millor manera de fer aquest front comú. Some officials of the other pro-independence party, COUP, also met Puigdemont in Brussels a few days ago. In fact, in the past few hours, Coop MP Benet Salelias visited the jailed ministers to express his support. The officials behind bars are members of Puigdemont's and Rivera's parties, including Esquerra's president, Oriol Junqueras. Senior officials of both parties said today that the elections are an opportunity to gather more than 50% of the vote for independence. On the Unionist side, the People's Party has approached the other two parties against independence by proposing three joint items for their manifestos ahead of the election. No a un referèndum il·legal ni legal, acord entre els partits democràtics, acord entre els partits constitucionalistes i rebutjar qualsevol tipus de govern amb partits independentistes o que donen suport a la independència. The Ciutadans Party has already agreed on the points, while the socialists haven't been so clear. Barcelona Mayor Ada Calau's Catalunya en Comú has criticised the socialists for getting too close to the strongly unionist forces. Catalonia in Comú is the only major party running in the election that has explicitly said it does not want to be included in either the pro-independence or the unionist blocs. The upcoming election campaign is set to be one of the most atypical ever in Catalan politics, with some candidates in prison or in exile. Yet, this could still change. Spain's Supreme Court has started procedures to take over the case against the jailed pro-independence leaders. So far, the Spanish National Court is the one in charge. On November 2nd, a judge in this court sent eight ministers to prison without bail, the harshest precautionary measure possible. The Supreme Court granted bail to some Catalan Parliament Bureau members the week after. So, if it takes over the case against the ministers, it might also reconsider their imprisonments. Apart from eight Catalan ministers, the leader of the two main pro-independence organizations are also in custody. The National Court put them behind bars on October 16th, and this had an immediate effect on their associations. The imprisonment of Jordi Cuixart and Jordi Sánchez has provoked a boost in the memberships of their organizations. Cuixart's Omnium Cultural has increased its members by 14,000 in the past few weeks. Meanwhile, the Catalan National Assembly has seen an increase of 4,500 members. The day both leaders were put in jail, around 1,000 people registered to Omnium Cultural. Both associations have hosted Catalonia's main pro-independence demonstrations since 2012. Their next big project is holding a big rally on December 7th in Brussels. A man lost an eye after being shot with a rubber bullet during the Spanish police crackdown of the October 1st independence referendum. Today, he has filed a lawsuit against the Spanish police forces. Barcelona City Council and some human rights organizations are also involved. 
Roger Espanol, the man who lost an eye after he was shot with a rubber bullet by the Spanish police on the referendum day, has filed a complaint against members of the police force. Espanol was on his way home to take a chair to his mother who wanted to vote at a nearby school. According to the compiled images, the officer would have aimed directly at Espanol and shot him from about 15 meters away, a practice prohibited by some police protocols. That's why the complainants demand criminal responsibilities for the officer who shot the rubber bullet and for the two chiefs on the ground at the time. In addition, they were also asked for politicians to be held accountable. The demand could even reach the Spanish Congress. He explained it in a press conference accompanied by his lawyer, the deputy mayor of Barcelona and civil parties. A, a las autoridades públicas, primero les pido un reconocimiento real de lo que pasó el día 1 de octubre y por tanto depurar sus responsabilidades, tanto a la policía como a nivel político. Human rights organizations and the Barcelona City Council will also be presented as civil parties. According to the deputy mayor of Barcelona, it's his responsibility as a public administration. Creiem que la nostra obligació com a administració, que també som, com a estat, que també som, com a, eh, és una obligació precisament de eh, suplir allò que hauria de fer l'estat, allò que hauria de fer la fiscalia i, i, no, i no fa. They filed the complaint demanding that the police officers who wounded the Spaniel be held responsible for their actions. They also aim to prohibit the use of rubber bullets by police officers in Spain as a whole. The Catalan parliament prohibited the use of rubber bullets in 2013 after they caused many serious injuries, especially affecting people's eyes. This prohibition, however, only affects the Catalan police and not Spanish police. El nostre posicionament no és de millorar cap regulació, sinó de radicar les mateixes. I precisament amb la querella de Roger Espanyol, un dels alicients, un dels motius que ens porten a prendre aquesta acció és extendre aquesta lluita que s'ha donat amb tant arrelament social a Catalunya a la resta de l'estat espanyol. Roger Espanyol not only wants that those responsible for his injury face criminal responsibility, he also aims to be the last person wounded by a rubber bullet in Spain. All traffic lights turning red to allow emergency services to arrive quickly to hospital, the possibility to pay parking tickets anywhere by mobile phone or Wi-Fi. These are only some of the small examples of how cities can make life easier by becoming smarter. Barcelona is hosting this week the world's most important fair on smart cities. Starting today, a record number of metropolis, as well as exhibitors and experts, will meet in order to share their ideas on how urban centers can face their latest challenges. This is the first event in Catalonia since the full government was dismissed by Madrid and the first one without any ministers from the Catalan executive invited. The future is now. The world's leading event for smart cities, the Smart City Expo World Congress, opened its door today in Barcelona with a record participation of more than 700 cities from around the globe. Empower Cities, Empower People is this year's title theme. The director of the event, Hugo Valenti, believes that by making cities stronger, citizens can also be more empowered. I com ho fem? Pues hi ha moltíssimes tecnologies diferents, eh, des del cotxe policia més avançat del món que podem veure aquí, fins a solucions de participació ciutadana, que són eines tecnològiques molt simples que ens permetien, per exemple, actuar sobre els pressupostos municipals o ajudar a prendre decisions, no? 420 experts from all over the world have come together in the Catalan capital to address the most critical challenges that cities face in the future, population being one of them. Over the next few decades, as the world's population continues to grow, it is estimated that 2.5 billion more people will end up living in metropolitan areas. Technological developments are seen as crucial for the future management of the planet's ever-developing urban spaces. Major multinational companies such as AT&T, Microsoft, Mastercard, Siemens, Bosch and many more are participating in the Congress, exhibiting their latest solutions to the constantly evolving problems faced by cities worldwide. Barcelona's airport is also bringing good news to the city, as the passenger flow is as high as ever. The tense political moment in Catalonia had no negative effects on Barcelona's most international infrastructure in October. Barcelona El Prat Airport increased around 4% in passengers compared to October of last year. Girona Airport made an even more significant boost with a 21% increase in comparison to the same month last year. In fact, Ryanair announced today a new route from the northern Catalan city to Kaunas in Lithuania. Let's move on now to culture, specifically to Catalonia's own rumba.
Reflecting the history of the Catalan Roma people and of Catalonia itself, the musical style continues to have a strong presence here. Now, the musician considered to have founded the genre, Beret, who passed away three years ago, is being honored with a new album release. Produced by Peret's own grandson, Daniel Salvat Pubil, the CD is called From Respect to Respect, referring to the deceased artist's aspirations of respectful dialogue. The album from label Satellite K features unreleased classics recorded in the last month of Peret's life. The artist passed away in 2014, and one of his last shows was at the 2013 Merced Festival in Plaza Catalunya. <laughs> That's all from us for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more on the latest developments in Catalonia. But before we go, we'd like to leave you with some images of a unique educational experience for school children. Called the Gustum Dome, it is a project aimed at schools throughout Catalonia, and it's based on an innovative format that encourages students to learn about food processing. Thanks for watching, and see you tomorrow. És una gran riquesa pel nostre país i ens ajuda a mantenir la sobirania alimentària, és a dir, la producció dels aliments que la població catalana necessita. I fins i tot transport, perquè han de canviar de lloc segons l'època de l'any, per a poder-se alimentar amb condicions. La veia és una mica complicat. Primer, les abelles recol·lecten el nèctar de les flors i de les secrecions ensucrades d'algunes plantes que hi ha al voltant de les arnes. El dipositen a les cel·les i així redueixen l'aigua continguda al nèctar. Unes coses sobre els aliments. Com? I d'on surten? I aquí hi ha una veia.